We're going to rewrite these two absolute value functions as piecewise functions. You may recall that the absolute value function is easily described as just making negatives positive, but we can also describe it in a piecewise manner, writing that the absolute value of x is equal simply to x if x is non-negative, and if x is is negative, then the absolute value of x will hit it with an additional negative to flip it back to being a positive. The graph, of course, looks like this. So how the absolute value function works is that it does nothing to non-negative numbers, but it multiplies negative numbers by an additional negative to make them positive. So what we have to do in this first problem is figure out where the argument, the thing inside the absolute value bars, is negative. Where the argument is negative, the absolute value is going to hit it with an additional negative to make it positive. So we write 3x plus 6 is less than 0. We need to solve this inequality to figure out where is this thing, 3x plus 6, where is it negative. This inequality can easily be solved by subtracting 6 from both sides and then dividing both sides by 3. So we have 3x is less than negative 6 and then dividing both sides by 3, x is less than negative 2. So that's when 3x plus 6 is negative. It's negative when x is less than negative 2. So to write this function as a piecewise function, we're going to have it equal 3x plus 6 when x is at least negative 2, so the absolute value bars won't change anything. But when x is less than negative 2, then the absolute value bars are going to throw in an additional negative to negate it back to being positive. So here is our piecewise function. When x is less than negative 2, that's when the argument 3x plus 6 is negative. So the absolute value bars have the effect of multiplying by an additional negative to make it positive. On the other hand, when x is at least negative 2, the argument 3x plus 6 is not negative, and so the absolute value bars can just drop away and nothing is changed. It's just 3x plus 6. Here's what it looks like in a graph. You can see because of that negative when x is less than negative 2, the line is going downwards. But then as soon as we hit negative 2, we bounce back up, we start going upwards because we don't need to multiply by a negative anymore. Without the absolute value bars, if this part of the graph was not getting multiplied by a negative, then of course it would just be a normal line, and so at negative 2 it would start going into the negatives. But of course, because we have the absolute value, no negatives are permitted. The next example is a little more complicated because the argument inside the absolute value bars is a quadratic. So the graph here is a parabola. Now in the previous problem, we knew that we were dealing with a line that at some point is going to pass the x-axis and be negative, and everywhere else it will be positive. With a parabola, things are a little bit different because, for example, we could have a parabola that's not negative anywhere. We could have a parabola that is negative everywhere. We could have a parabola that does hit zero but never passes into the negatives. Before we worry about all these possibilities, though, let's just try setting the argument equal to zero and see what we find. If this quadratic has two x intercepts, then it would have to look something like this or something like this, in which case at least part of it has to be negative. So we take the quadratic inside the absolute value bars and set it equal to zero to see where it hits the x-axis. Thankfully, this can easily be factored into x plus 3 times x minus 1. Notice 3 plus minus 1 is 2, and 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. So this factorization works, and by the zero product property, we have two x-intercepts, negative 3 and positive 1. So this parabola does hit the x-axis twice. We also know it's upwards facing because the leading coefficient, 1, is positive. So roughly, the parabola must look something like this, where it hits the x-axis at negative 3 and positive 1, and it's upwards facing. So it's this part here, below the x-axis, where the y's are negative, that we're going to have to hit with another negative to flip it back up 
and make it positive. Let's write this out as a piecewise function. And there it is. We know that between those two x-intercepts, negative 3 and 1, the argument, x squared plus 2x minus 3, is negative. So it's right there, between negative 3 and positive 1, where we have that multiplication by a negative. That's what the absolute value does. That way it flips back up and becomes positive. Outside of that space, we don't have to change anything. If x is less than or equal to negative 3, the absolute value bars drop away and nothing has to change because it's already positive. If x is greater than or equal to 1, same thing. The bars just drop away. No change is made because it's already positive. Here's a graph of what that absolute value function looks like. You can see that to the left of negative 3 and to the right of positive 1, it looks just like a normal parabola. But it's right here between negative 3 and positive 1 that it's been flipped upside down so that it's positive. So that's how to rewrite absolute value functions as piecewise functions. Everywhere on the domain where the thing that's inside the absolute value function is positive, the absolute value function doesn't change it. But wherever the inside is negative, the absolute value will hit it with an additional negative to make it positive. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my pre-calculus course and pre-calculus exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.